Hi, welcome everybody to Wine Roots. I'm today here with Scott and Heidi. Welcome, guys. How are you guys doing? Thank you. We're, We're doing really nice. happy to be here. Nice. Um, I'm really glad that you guys are here because when I started this project, you were one of the people that were in my mind. So finally, after it's been, I think, almost a year, right, Heidi, when we first met? I, I think it's been over a year. Yeah, over I think it's a like year. Almost two years, probably. Probably. It was right after you got here. Yeah, I was an intern. Mm -hmm. uh, I was new in the town. And Heidi and Scott saw me, invite me to have a glass of wine, talk about the wine, and then you guys invite me to this white party. Oh, yeah. I right. remember the white party. I, I met all your friends. Mm -hmm. And after that, I have to move away to Santa, Santa Rosa. That's where I am now. But uh, every time when I come to Santa Lina, I try to say hi, stop by, and keep building this good relationship that you guys uh, built since the beginning. Oh, we love it. And did, I think we ran into you in Healdsburg one time, didn't we, or someplace? Was it Sonoma? Hmm. I can't remember. Oh, we ran into each other in uh, Goose and Gander. Oh, Goose and Gander. Yeah, Gander. yeah, yeah Goose and Gander. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Um, so now that we're here together, I want to share your cool story with the people. So I'm going to start, Scott, sorry, but ladies first. Oh, you got yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, can, can you talk more a little bit of how do you start in into the wine industry? What was the things that made you discover or to get into wine? Well, I, I got into wine drinking at okay. a very young age. <laughs> um, grew up in a family. We had wine with dinner every night. Uh, and then most of my, once I turned 21, I moved to Washington State. So then I started drinking wines, like a lot uh -huh. of Syrahs and things from Washington. But I, I was always in the wine drinking business. I wasn't okay. in the wine making business until okay. I met Scott. Okay. And, uh, Are you from California? Yeah, I'm from California. Okay. San Jose originally. San Jose? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then when Scott and I met, he had already been making wine for a long time, I don't know, 15 mm. or 20 years or some, some amount of time. And um, that's when I first started to really understand what it was like on the other side of the fence okay. to actually make the wine and produce the wine. And Scott always talks about, you know, when you're a, a winemaker, you really have three jobs. You're an, an agriculturalist because you yes. have to grow the grapes and then you're a manufacturer because you have to make the wine and mm -hmm. then you're a retailer because you have to sell the wine. Okay. You know, I never gave any thought to any of that. I just would buy a bottle of wine and yeah. enjoy wine. So. And um... I want to talk also about, um, I read on the website, I did a little research about you guys. Uh -oh. So I read about your first love. Do oh. you know what I'm talking about? The, Z the Zinfandel, <laughs> yeah. Well, that is what my parents love, Zinfandel. And okay. so when I was a kid growing up, we would have these big jugs of <laughs> Zinfandel. And that's, that's just the wine that I became familiar with at a okay. really young age. I mean, even when I was just a little kid, like four okay. or five years old, we wow. had wine with dinner. But so all was, your family were together, right? Yeah, we're all okay. together. Yeah, it, was just, it was just part of our evening nice. ritual. And so that's a lot of what I drank until I realized there were so many other varietals and yeah. I got exposed to a lot of It's a whole ones. word. It's oh a my whole gosh, word. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, from um, Washington, you moved to Napa straight? or it was Well, like... when, when Scott and I met, I was living okay. in uh, Seattle and Scott was living mm. here and we still keep both the houses because we how, like to go back and forth. How is that uh, that uh, encounter? How did you guys met? Oh gosh, that's a lot. Do you remember? Do you remember Wait, Scott? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember. <laughs> yeah, I, well, yes, absolutely, I remember. Well, we um, both were working in tech at the time. Okay. And we were in a conference in in uh, Toronto. Okay. And so and then, uh, we happened to be in a business that we actually was a social setting first but then we had a business meeting a couple days later and i remember meeting her and she just was so bright and the whole room seemed to change when i met her and then um we ended up uh, having our actual meeting two or three days later and okay it was some time after that before we started dating but we built a professional relationship okay. and it was really I mean, here's my, my question who talked to each other first uh, well, we got introduced. So mm, okay. we had a friend that came over and said, hey, you guys are going to meet later. Uh, this is Scott. Okay. Scott, this is Heidi. And I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah, you sent me the email. We're going to meet. So that, that's kind of mm -hmm. how it started. Okay. But then we we started we started chatting and uh, we realized that we were 
had birthdays three days apart in the same year. Mm. So and you figured out that kind of connected <laughs> that we were we were similar age, similar similar background. So that that really helped a lot. Nice. You know, and we both loved wine. So yeah. There you okay. Go. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. and after you guys met, you were living here in Napa, right? At the yeah. time, and you were in what, in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Okay. And here, here's my thing because Washington also has great wines, and Pinot Noir is different, and each region has their own like uh, structures and identities. Yeah. So I love Napa Valley because I, I believe that in California, in the new world is one of the regions that have the best quality grapes, but also you came all the way from Seattle. It was for Scott or for wine? <laughs> <laughs> It, it was it was a package deal, but it yeah. was for Scott. It was, it was, it was the, well, the and, whole combo, and, right? And yeah. and my parents live here too, oh, okay. so it was um, you know. Lucky, I, lucky me. Yeah. Lucky you. Yeah. It will all work out. Yeah. Yeah. The, I would say the wines of Washington have gotten much better over like the last twenty years, a lot because of global warming. Yeah. yeah. So the temperatures are much hotter in Washington yeah. now than they were. Back yeah. then, so the yeah. climate is is much richer for yeah. growing like Cabernet and other grapes. Yes, yep. And Pinots are great in Oregon, and I have actually oh, okay. not done a lot of wine tasting in Oregon, mm. but that's really what Oregon's known yeah. for. Yeah, actually, a fun fact that I like to share is like the United States is the only country that has a vineyard and a winery in every single state. Oh wow! Oh, yeah. yeah, I heard that. Too. So you can go to every state to visit one vineyard and get wine of each state. Yeah, we got to try Alaska. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But because they probably I'm actually sure there's really a wine Hawaii. Really awesome um, ice wines up there. Yes, which, yeah. which for sure. Be pretty good for sure. Them, so. And and then going out to Scott. So I know you had this um, act background on, yeah. on your side. I did. Yeah, you grew up on an orchard and a, and a yeah. dairy farm, right? Yeah. How was those early years uh, of you just discovering the world yeah. outside? Yeah, well, it's funny you, you you talked about you know Heidi. How did she get into the wine the wine business? Mm -hmm. My my story is almost exactly opposite because wow. I grew up in Utah, Utah, drank no wine till I was thirty, okay. and uh, didn't have quite that same same experience. My first love was A and W root beer, so I was just <laughs> you know, can't be more polar opposite than that. Um, but uh, but yes, yeah, so we my family was all in ag. Um, we did we were farmers. We had alfalfa and wheat on the dairy farm uh, and my grandparents had a dairy farm so i worked out every summer and it was a big part of our family and my family yeah. heritage and then on the other side of my family we had orchards and so we did a lot of fruits and okay. uh, uh, some quite a, quite a bit of vegetable farming as well so that was in my blood from the time i was just very little yeah um but didn't really do much with wine i, I happened to become a chemist uh, and a microbiologist yeah. in college well wow. so when i by the time i moved to napa I'd kind of been in sales. I'd been really in sales and marketing. I'd been a microbiologist and a chemist and in ag. So all three of those businesses that Heidi just talked about all came together Correct. really perfectly for me. Um, and so I started making wine and, uh, and that was, uh, that was how it kind of got okay. started. It was just more of a fun hobby to start with. Exactly. That was my question. It was more like, uh, you wanted to start the business right away. It was more like a passion. It was more like a hobby. It was more like you want to yeah. put all together, all your knowledge to put it into a bottle of yeah. wine? At, at first it was just fun. It was like, okay. I'm gonna make some wine. Okay. Uh, I had access to about a ton of grapes, which will make about 60 cases of wine. Okay. And I took half and a, a friend of mine, uh, Lawrence Papali, who lives here in St. Helena, oh, nice. and I did it together in his garage. Huh. And the wine turned out really well. And huh. uh, I thought it was pretty good. Other people started to like it. And then Lawrence one day said, you know what? I think this wine's really great. I'm going to take it down and I'm going to enter it at the Napa Valley Home Winemakers Contest. And I'm like, that is a bad idea. We've never done this before. Wow. Your first vintage. First vintage, wow. 1999. And uh, I forgot about it. Like, you know, I'm thinking all these guys have been making wine in the Valley for 20 years. They've yeah. got some of the best leadership and coaching that they could possibly get to make wine. Well, three weeks later, he called me back and he says, you're never going to believe it. I go, what? He goes, we won. I go, we won what? He goes, we won the whole contest. I mean, what do you mean? He said, we won best cab and we won best of show. Wow. In the, same, in the whole thing. So that was two years after we started that project. And that's when the light bulb went on for me. Nice. I thought, boy, I love this. The wine is great. It can be great. Let me see if I can make something of this. Yes. And so small, start with 100 cases. That's 100 where cases. It started. Wow. Yeah. How many tons are that? Uh, 100 cases would be about two tons. Two you know, tons? You, well, 
Yeah, about two tons. Two tons. And everything was in like homemade in a garage. Uh, no well, facility, no custom. Yeah, in 2001, that was the first commercial year. Hmm. So that you have to take to a bonded winery. Okay. So that started in a winery. We actually found a very affordable one over in Sebastopol. So hmm. we put, picked the grapes in Napa, <laughs> drove it all the way to Sebastopol, <laughs> made the wine, bottled it, and then we finally right. got our first bottles. Nice. Yeah. That, that's pretty impressive, that story that you mentioned, because I was listening to a podcast like two weeks ago about this. It was like a one-on-one -on -one interview. And the lady was saying, like, my passion is to do poetry, and but it can poetry doesn't pay the bills. Mm. And the guy goes like, okay, but you have your work that maybe you don't love your work, but the work pays your bills, and you have free time in the afternoon to write poetry. Why you don't yeah. start doing poetry? And she goes like, no, because I want to like all focus on my. I want my life to be all poetry. And I goes like, well. Maybe you don't want poetry. You want the fame of become famous through poetry. <laughs> Maybe you want people to see you through your poetry. Yeah. If you have a passion, you can use your free time to build the life you want. And when you do that, it's like authentic. Yeah. So mm -hmm. when you're sharing that, like just start small in your free time, just doing what you like, and then the result is going to be authentic. I, I couldn't agree with you more. In fact, the best advice I ever got. Mm -hmm. Um, was Nancy Andrus who started Pine Ridge Winery and she said to me she said Scott always make less wine than you can sell yeah. and I thought that was so funny but what happens is is most people they make a bunch of money somewhere else they come to Napa Valley yeah. and they make a thousand cases it's gonna start with a thousand cases and they're like this is great wine I can sell it so they give about 10 cases away to their friends yeah. they sell a bunch to their friends at work and now they've sold 20 cases and they have 980 cases left to go. And they go, huh. Yeah. <laughs> and now they're making another thousand and yeah, another yeah. thousand. And then they're like, whoa, <clears throat> this is like a full time business just yes. to sell a thousand yes. cases. So people get ahead of themselves. Then they, you know, it gets to be too much and they, and they fail. But starting small, making less than you can, um, making less than you can sell. That was the best advice ever. I mean, that's kind of what we did with, with Knight, don't you think? Yeah, and, and I think of those three things being the agri you know, agriculture, manufacturing, and selling. Yeah. Selling is by far the hardest yes. Yeah. part yes. of those three because, yes. you know, there's a thousand amazing wineries here yes. in Napa, in the Napa yeah. Valley. And how do you stand out? How do you try to differentiate yeah. yourself? But I think you guys make a great, 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 like, a team building, like, the sign and this, like, a um experience like the building the wines it's different it mm -hmm. has like that uh, i would like i would add is you say haiti hey, was agriculture it was manufacture and sales say it, retail retail, yeah. retail. Mm -hmm. i would add a uh, artist no, the no, artist yeah. part yeah, yeah a little bit. yeah that's absolutely yeah. right a little bit yeah. well we we opened the saint in 2018 okay. because we were trying to figure out how we were going to sell all the wine that we had yeah. made and we had been previously doing private parties in san francisco right. and different events we we're pouring a lot of wine for free hoping that people would get excited yes. about it and buy the wine and we, we did sell some, but it's just like Scott said, like it's really, really hard to get beyond, you know, the first yes. 20 or 30 cases. And so since we live close by, one day this space opened up and we thought, you know, it's really convenient. Why don't yeah. we see if we can uh, turn this into um, a special place where people can enjoy not only night because we could feature it here, but let's try to help other small producers yeah. just like us because this is a big place. There's yeah. no way we could just sell our own wine here. For the people that are listening to us right now, I would like them to invite to come to the sign. And also, what, what is the sign? Because it's a like wine bar, but there's also food. There's yeah. also cheese. There's yeah. also good people. There's <laughs> also good music. Uh, what is it? Like, what is the, yeah. the vibe? What is it? Can you explain yeah, to us? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, it, we, we do offer a lot of things. I mean, originally we wanted the Saint to be the destination for cult and boutique wines of the Napa Valley. Okay. So you could come to one place and you could try flights of, you know, mountain red Cabernet or mountain Cabernet, or you could try Pinots from Carneros, but you wouldn't have to drive to all those different wineries. You could be in one place and you could try all those in addition to our private label, which yeah. we have here too. 
but then it just evolved into we have live music and we have fun parties and we do private nightclubs and we have for you know fine dining and yeah. um, cheese and charcuterie boards so yeah. I mean, we have a lot to offer a yeah. lot of people but it's it's all happened over time it wasn't like we just sat down one day and thought about yeah. doing all yeah. these things yeah well in fact i refer to it as a wine experience center so when you it, think about okay. it we have lots of different wine experiences you can do private winemaker dinners like heidi yeah. was saying or you could do a private nightclub and rent it out yeah. But it's all about creating that experience and that connection mm -hmm. that wine is so about. And that was our biggest passion. The wine is wonderful, but wine is such a connection. And that yeah. is why we started Night. And I think Ideals can tell you about why we started Night and why it's called Night. But then the Saint was a natural extension of okay. that experience of okay. sharing. So everything, something. just go backwards into the timeline. Yeah. You make your first wine you yep. won the you won the the, the yep. napa valley yep. contest yeah yep. then you met haiti yep yeah haiti fell in love with you you fell in love with haiti yep yep, yep. yep. You're, you're... i'm going there i'm going there <laughs> then haiti moved to santa Elena. yes yeah, i think that's okay. pretty close yeah. okay yep. and then you you guys build night label yes. what is night label what type of wine it is yeah. what type of grapes you're using great great question so timing's pretty close so uh, i've been making wine for about 15 years before i met heidi mm -hmm. then we had kind of this long distance relationship of her living in seattle i lived here we both had kids in both places uh, but we had started uh night uh pretty you know i'd say within a year or so of when we started started dating and and we still were kind of remote at that time okay. so then uh, that was when we were kind of started night and that went along pretty well for a few years, but we knew we were going to need an event space an experience mm -hmm. center at some point. Uh, and that's when we started spending more time down here and then we started the, the, the same, but you want, okay. why don't you talk about night and why, what, what, why did we start that? And what was the, the important part about that? Well, we, we wanted to, uh, we wanted to, well, first of all, Scott asked me having, he's been a winemaker for a long time. When we got together, he said, would you have any interest in making our own label? Right. And, you know, of course, naively, I said, sure. <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> How much work could that be? <laughs> so, um, so once we decided, we, we had the grapes, we decided that we were going to create night or create a, a wine label. Then you have to figure out what could you call it and that is such a hard thing because yeah. here in napa valley where there's so many different wineries you know picking a name that really reflects the essence of what you want your wine to be yeah. is is very hard especially we knew we didn't want it to be either of our names because we didn't want the wine to be about us we wanted the wine mm. to be about the connections of people and the memories you create with yeah. friends and family over wine and for us, most of the time that's at night because that's where right. all the fun and the adventure and the mystery happens. Yeah. And so as it turns out, we were in Barcelona and we, we were going back to our hotel and we heard voices, laughter coming down an alley. And without any hesitation, we both just went down the alley, <laughs> you know, in the middle of the night uh, and we... Uh, people were waving us over and people were standing out in a little bottega drinking wine out of jugs uh, standing around a barrel and we were there for many hours and we had such an amazing experience with like half the people didn't speak English it didn't yeah. matter we were all just you know connecting yes. on, on our own level and so as our we finally did go back to the hotel as the sun was coming up and we said you know we should call our wine night because right. that is when yeah. all the fun happens and yeah. especially if you're willing to just take that yeah. path less traveled and and open yeah. yourself up to adventure and yes. that's yeah. what we did i know that you're saying night um and wine can i go super hand to hand because i mean if you open a bottle of wine at 9 a.m that's kind of people yeah, you gotta, judge you. Yeah. Yeah. You, you gotta open, ask especially if you're by yourself <laughs> exactly like, yeah. yeah but if you open a bottle of wine at 9 p.m. to share and usually like dinners or late meals goes yeah along. till 1 a.m. yes so, yeah. it's it's doing like I feel I would like to do this statement I don't know is 100% sure but uh, most of the bottles of wines are open at night yeah 
I, I think so. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. You know, we we have seen a few people open bottles of wine at Gilwood's here in town. It's well for breakfast, but you know. That's, that's, that's rare. Okay. <laughs> so, so night, uh, it's finally like a creation, a label between both of you. Yes. The first project that you yep. ventured. Mm -hmm. yep. And how was the, the beginning? How was everything? How did it go? It was awesome. Well, you were talking about the artist part. Uh -huh. She is the artist part of our brand, wow. for sure. All the creative, the label, the, the, nice. the uh, symbolism, the artistry of what both the saint is and what night is. Uh, Heidi is really uh, a master at that. Uh, but, uh, you know, when you have a wine brand called Knight, there's a lot of fun marketing you can do about that. Mm. And Heidi and I were talking one night and she came up with this idea that if we're going to launch our wine, let's call it Opening Night. Wow. And so we had Opening Night and we opened a night, night on Opening Night. And we actually did two launches. You want to talk mm. about our launch a little bit? Well, we wanted it to be you know, like opening night of a big show. So we were in San Francisco, we had red carpet, Every, uh, everybody was formal, formal dress. Uh, it was at a big hotel in San Francisco. Uh, and it was just, it was really, really fun, just over the top you know, launch of our brand. And then we did one very similar in Seattle as well. Uh, yeah. Open we a big the step night. and repeat. So like people walked on the red yeah, carpet. Yeah, paparazzi. Yeah. The camera. Nice. People were taking cameras. And they, nice. People walked in, they got a glass and they could, go around all the stations and taste the different wines and uh yeah we it was, some of these yeah. Too, so, but that it was, was a lot of it's fun. really fun and then we uh when the, you know when, when you have a brand called night you can think of a lot of things like tonight's the night oh what a mm. night a night to remember you know there's so many songs and movies and things that uh that play off the word night but we found uh, a quote by a mid-century american poet okay. and her name is was well, is uh, Mignon McLaughlin, mm -hmm. and it said, for the happiest life, rigorously plan your days and leave the night to chance. That's yeah. powerful. And and we, we, that is just how, how we roll. We roll. Yeah. 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 We love leaving the night to chance. You never know what crazy yeah. thing's going right. to happen. Like going yeah. down the or alley. Amazing yes, that, that yeah. story of the alley in Barcelona. Is... Yeah, no, we, and we have that story a million times over. And, and most of the people that come and do night tastings here, and we tell that story, and then they all have their own stories. You know, it's, okay. But um, so all of, our, all of our bottles have that quote on the back. Wow. It, and then all of our corks say leave the night to chance on the corks. It's <laughs> like, wow. No, uh, now um, another question about night is what was your first vintage with night? Yeah. 2013. 2013. Mm -hmm. 2013. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's been a while now. Yeah. It's been yeah. a while now. And you only can find night here in the Saint? This is our only retail outlet. Nice. Yeah. Uh, we do have a, a wine club and we do have a, an online yeah. space so people can order and we, we have a night we club can ship actually. well we do well yeah we, in, in addition <laughs> yeah. to a, a wine club yes we call it the night club <laughs> so people can join <laughs> can join the night club and That's get, hilarious. Get, get right. VIP yeah. access to the wines uh Yep, good point. Thank you for remembering that. That's a great marketing you stay on strategy. Brand. Wow. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's, brand, please. yeah. <laughs> and also, I know you guys have a wine from all over the world in mm -hmm. the site, right? Okay. Yes. That's one of the goals, too. It yeah. is. Okay. Yeah. So, you, have you traveled all over these places? How do you pick those wines? That's part of the goal. You know, it's a great mm. tax write off. And you can go <laughs> anywhere and, uh, and, and taste wine and bring them back to the same. But, the answer is yes. We do have wines from all over Napa, Sonoma a little bit, a few from Washington, uh, up and down parts of California. But we also have uh, wines internationally. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are very fortunate to have been able to go to a few places. We've been to Spain, okay. uh, back to uh, back to Spain. Uh, we've been to Italy a couple times, nice. both up in the Piedmonte region and down, uh, down in Tuscany. And uh, now we're going to go oh, to yeah. Bordeaux. We're yeah. going to Bordeaux in a month. So nice. yeah. I mean, when when you grow up in the Napa Valley or in California, you you tend to drink the wines that are familiar yeah. to you. And so we knew a lot about California wines, yeah. but we hardly knew anything about international wines and old world wines. Yeah. 
And so when we opened the Saint, we knew that we would want to have those wines on our list because a lot of locals don't want to drink Napa wine all the time. No. They want something different. Exactly. So we started traveling around and drinking wines from all over the world and wow. learning about, you know, we That's went to amazing. Mendoza and learn about Malbecs. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. Mendoza was Argentina. great. Yeah. So, so I'm excited about going to France because yes. I will be the first to admit I know very little about French wine. Well, so we'll spend a week in Bordeaux and hopefully we'll nice. know a little bit more. Yes, and when you travel, do you do like a scouting around the area, meet the locals? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, we'll try to, yeah. yeah. We bring wine. We bring a wine wheelie with nice. us, so we take twelve bottles of our wine so that we can trade oh, and share and that's, that's, provide gifts. Now that you say that, Haiti, this is like amazing because I was reading a book about the Roman Empire, yeah. and um, you know, wine was a uh, originally like from the region of um, um, Egypt and all that uh, Mediterranean mm -hmm. yep. and then also from Italy and you know the Roman Empire was super big and they have a lot of wine and when they go to the volcanics or they go to Germany and to different areas they carry wine yeah. and they give wine to the locals so they get drunk together and they want like <laughs> the confidence and yeah. then they yeah. build that uh, the bond. yeah exactly that bond and then if it was good, they make allies or not, mm -hmm. war. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you, we, it's, it's funny, we, we spent, uh, we, in one example, we went to Tuscany, uh -huh. and we went to Casa Nova de Nuri, and while we were there, we met the founder's grandson, who was pretty much taking wow. over the business. And if you know anything about that wine, it's a very famous winery in, in Tuscany, and they do a really great job of marketing, and uh, several, several 100-point wines. Anyway, we got to spend about three hours there. And he spent his whole time with us. We went through all the wines, many old vintages. Yeah. And by the time we got, when we got done, we went out, we brought a bottle of ours in, we huh. brought it in after we, after we purchased some wine from him. And he was so grateful and just so gracious and gave us his card. And he, you know, he promised to come see us here. Fast forward just the other night, we're at our, we were in, we're in Phoenix, we were in Phoenix yeah. Arizona. Yeah, and, the, right? and the provider, purveyor of that place came and said, oh, you guys have gone around the world. You've tasted wine. Let me go. I just got a shipment. Come over here. He opens, he cracked open the wood box and he pulls out a Casanova de Neri. And we're like, we no. love that. We went there yeah. and we saw it. He goes, well, let's just drink it. So we popped it open. It was like a nice. 2015 Brunello. You know, we just, I mean, we just offered it to us for yeah. such a kind uh, kind gesture. But that's the kind of connections mm -hmm. yeah. that, wine, that wine has, but why we really feel strongly about Night Celebrates, those exact connections mm -hmm. that mm. it helps unite us together. Yeah. And and just like you said, what the Romans did. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, it was like a, like a community, you know, you share it with the people, you... And also it's another thing that um, when you're drinking wine, most of the time uh, you're doing it with people you love, you know, or yeah. people that uh, you trust. So mm -hmm. it's like kind of like take your shift away and mm -hmm. you're just like being yourself, you're sharing. Yeah. And I was talking with another friend, he did the podcast, this podcast, but in Spanish, he's from yeah. Chile. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. and he was talking about uh, he what he loves about the industry is like is this product that you grow like first of all is like mother nature first of all like mother nature gave us wine and we just like make it like drinkable and sell it for to share for the people. Mm. So the other big thing is like when you see a label, it's also time captured like the time, so the year. So there's so many stories that happen in that year right. and it's in one bottle. Yeah. And so like the marketing and the art, it's also in one bottle. So it's, as you say, Haiti, like the industry has, has technology because, you know, the vineyard, all, all the equipment that we use, all the new stuff that are implementing, that's technology, innovation, uh, has uh, like agriculture, has uh, art, has a lot of stuff, marketing. So it's all for... At the end of the day to share yeah yeah you know it's funny you should mention that because um scott was just talking about his first commercial year was 20 uh no 2001, yeah, 2001. Yeah. so just um about three weeks ago we had a party at our mm -hmm. house and uh it's it's a it's a party that happens all across yeah. the country on the last february of the yeah. last saturday of february yeah. okay. And it's called Open That Bottle Night. And you can Google it. I mean, you'll find tons Open of information about night. it. But the whole concept is everybody has that special bottle that they've been saving for a long time, like the special bottle, like the last bottle that you had from that vintage wow. in 2001. Yep. Wow. And yet 
you know, life is short and uncertain. Yeah. And so rather than just saving it for some event that might not ever happen, get your bottle, invite your friends ah, over, yes. tell your story. Everybody tell, brings a bottle. Everybody tells their story, Great pour the stories. wine around. And it's such a That's fun night. So cool. And so Scott yep. opened his last yep. bottle from 2001 yep. wow. for that night. And, yep. uh, and, well, and all of our other friends brought wine and everybody had a story of yeah. you know what it was that was special. They, it wasn't like people were bringing expensive wine. It was yeah. just whatever that wine had a special story for them. Okay. Yep. Now just to, I, I mean, have a great time with you guys. Uh, probably we need to do a second part because this can go for <laughs> hours and hours. But uh, now to wrap up a little bit, um, can you share each of you one of um, these stories that you mentioned uh, it can be around, it can be in your childhood years, it can be a travel that you have together, it can be a family memory, but a story that is around this talking, this yeah. wine, this uh, feeling. There's so many. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I mean, we, we st wanted to start writing a book called The Adventures of Skydy and Hut because nice. we have so many yeah. stories. <laughs> Um, for, I don't know, thinking about one on the, um, I, actually, I'll tell you one that's about, it's about our family. Uh -huh. So I mentioned that I started drinking wine at a very young age, sitting yeah. around the dinner table with my family. And um, we, we didn't have a lot of money when I was young growing up, but my parents both had their own small businesses and they um, grew those businesses and became um, more successful. And at some point, they were able to start buying wine that didn't come in a big, huge jug. And so that was, I don't know, at least 40 years ago, maybe a little bit more, they started um, buying wine. And now my parents have a huge wine cellar um, underground in their house. And every time we go to visit them, they pull out wine that they've had for years and years so we're drinking wine you know that's 30 or 40 years old some of it's way past its prime it's like you know <laughs> it wasn't intended to last that long but it's just it's such a fun thing my dad just brings him so much joy to you know nice. dig in the cellar and find out what's there and then we all get to you know taste it so yeah. it's yeah. really it is you know it's just such a connector of yeah. people yeah. and experience and we love that yeah that, nice. i think so too i mean that's what it is i mean there's so many stories racing through my mind of all the wonderful people i've met through the years that have mm -hmm. been here at the saint and that i've done tastings with um but i'll end with a funny one okay okay so I have a million. I was, I was trying to. I was going to tell you about my best wine night and the, you know, the, the things that like these. But this this is a fun one because I, I enjoy it and, and I'll tell this every once in a while when somebody comes. So I was doing a tasting many years ago, mm -hmm. and um, I typically make you know reds mostly, but we always have had a white because a lot of people like white. Mm -hmm. So I was making. I made a Chardonnay, and generally when we do our tastings, we start with the with white wine first, and then we move into the red wines. Mm -hmm. Well, this. Gentleman Charlie from Houston, Texas comes with his daughter. And she's a cute young little Texas girl, and he's this great big Texan <laughs> oil guy. This guy got a big old accent from okay. Houston. Okay, nice. So we line up all the wines and I poured them out. And uh, we start with the white. I start telling him about the wines and and so, so we're gonna start with the Chardonnay. He goes, A B C. I go, what? He goes, A B C. I go, A B C. And he goes, anything but Chardonnay. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, okay. ABC. And then his daughter goes, but daddy, I love Chardonnay. I want to taste some Chardonnay. And so he's like, fine, we'll have some Chardonnay. So he passes on it. His daughter, oh, this is really good. And goes down the line. They start drinking. Then finally at the end, he kind of reaches over and he's tastes like it, it without telling me. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell he's tasting. He's like, mm. he's tasting that. He goes, all right, we're going to get some wine. He grabs his pan. He says, I'll take a case of that red, a case of that Merlot. He says, now listen, don't tell any of my friends back in Houston. But I'll take a case of that there Chardonnay. <laughs> that's amazing. Goes. So anyway, that's uh, that's one of the wonderful things about Chardonnay, about wines. You just never know. Yes, yeah. exactly. So, nice. You know. You made a Texan by Chardonnay. There you go. <laughs> what are the odds? <laughs> Guys, I have That's so much story. fun. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for sharing these stories. Yeah. Um, it's, it's been great. Uh, every time I have this type of interview, made me want to build this project bigger and bigger and bigger so we can get to 
more people and more yeah. people start drinking wine. Absolutely. Well, congratulations Absolutely. to you. Yeah. You're such Thanks. a wonderful host. And thank you. Thank you for coming and we'll look forward to seeing you yeah. in years to come. Excellent. It was an amazing yeah, day, Scott. Yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs>